You may have heard about machine learning, but exactly how machines learn today, and if the current approach will take us to the so-called AGI, artificial general intelligence, and someday spawn a Terminator. Right? Today, I want to share with you what I recently learned about how machine acquires their knowledge, and uh, I will approach this by comparing two types of birds, parrots and crows. So first, parrot. Like we humans usually think parrots are very, very intelligent birds, right? Because they can speak human language. But actually, if we take one step back, let's see how we train the parrot. Like we need to repeat the same sentence many, many, many times. And we have to have a human teach them, like stay with them, correct them, right? It's gonna take a long time before the parrot can speak the first human sentence. And also, when you try to have a conversation with a parrot, you would find that's impossible, right? Because the parrot does not really know what it's talking about. It just keeps repeating what has been taught, what has been shoved into his mind. How parrots learn to speak human language is very similar how our machines learn today. In order to teach our machine to learn something, we need to feed that machine with very, very huge amount of data. For example, if you want to teach a machine an AI to recognize a cat, you need to feed that machine literally millions and millions of cast images, sometimes as many as images you can find in the entire internet. And then the machine will take this whole millions of images and say, okay, let me start to recognize a pattern. When that pattern is mature enough, I almost see every single cast in the world, then I can start to recognize a cat. During this process, the machine needs human help. We have to have a human to stay there with the algorithm during the training process and say, okay, this is correct, you can keep going. This is wrong, you need to stop and correct it. For example, when machines see this cat, and the machine will say, this is not a cat. It looks like inside out, right? So let me put in some other category, but not cat. But at this time, the human will stop the machine and say, wait a second, this cat looks like inside out, but it's still a cat. It's just a cat you have never seen before. So the human will move, help the machine to move that image into the category, uh, the cat category again. Then the machine will keep going. This process, this interference happens many, many times during the training. So the key part of our current machine learning approach is one, huge amount of data, and two, human interference. Right? To be honest, with our current applications, this approach works very, very well in many, many fields, like facial recognition, image recognition, right? It works very well, but it certainly has its limits. Before we dive into the limits, let's switch to another bird. Crowns, compared to parrots, um, the story of a crown will show a much higher intelligence. Like in the city, when crowns want to eat the nuts, because they cannot crush the nuts by themselves, they have to find another way. They realize, oh, if I drop the nuts on the street, the, the traffic, the cars will crush the nuts, then I, I can go eat it. But then they realize it's not good enough because the traffic, if they just fly down and eat the nuts, maybe they will run over by a car. But later they recognize, oh, the car always stops in one place, in front of the red light. They see, okay, if I just drop the nuts during the green light and let the traffic run over the nuts, then I can only fly down during the red light and can eat the nuts. They tried it and they succeed. That's not the end of the story. They recognize this pattern. This car stopped in the red light and then they can use that strategy to eat nuts. Can be applied to many other places, almost every single intersection. Now let's see what we can learn from the story. First, crows can recognize a pattern and apply this pattern to many different places. They recognize a car stop at one red light. They know this is a pattern that we can apply to other intersections with red light. And the second, there are no big data. Like Chrome actually have very, very small, small sample of data because they cannot try error with their life. If they try and they run over by a car, game over, right? And third, there's no human interaction. There's no human tell them where to look at to see, oh, the car stop at red light to try to recognize that. There's no human like correct their mistake. There's no human reward their correct behavior. Now we know how parrots learn to speak human language and how Crohn's can learn to eat nuts without crush by a car. Let's compare the two learning patterns and see why the Crohn's one is actually one we want to pursue if we want to go for artificial general intelligence. 
Let's see from the data perspective first. Remember the Paris learning pattern requires a lot of, lot of training data. Sometimes if you want to train someone to recognize a cat, that's okay because we have a lot of cat's image. But what if we don't have the training data sometimes? For example, remember in Terminator that uh, T-800 only have one photo of Sarah Connor. In that case, how are you going to train your AI, right? So when you don't have enough training data, the parrot learning pattern is not applicable. That's why cross learning pattern has way more potential because that's also how we learn, right? If you point a cat to a human baby and just with one cat, the baby should be able to recognize that's a cat. Next time a cat walk by, the baby would be, be able to point out, oh, that's a cat, right? That's how we recognize, that's how we learn with very few data sample. Now let's take a look at scalability. When I say scalability, I mean, if a learning pattern or the learning result can be applied to different fields. For example, the parrot. Today, if we have a parrot already speaks English and we want to teach that parrot to speak Spanish, none of things that parrots learn about English can be applied. We have to start from day zero, right? And also take a real example, AlphaGo. AlphaGo is one of the most advanced technology today that can beat all the human player in Go. But so what? If you apply AlphaGo to play other game or drive a car, it will not work at all, right? But it's different with Crown's learning pattern. Today, the crowds can learn how the car works, how the city function in terms of traffic. But today, tomorrow, if you want to throw that crowd into a totally different environment, let's say in a mountain, uh, in a nature environment, that crowd can figure out another different pattern. A more advanced learning pattern or AI technology should be able to do many different things in different fields rather than can only focus on very narrow and bounded game. Human interference can be a very big advantage in terms of learning, but also can be a very big limit. Take a parrot as an example. One human trainer can help one parrot learn very fast. But what if tomorrow we want to train one million parrots to speak English? We cannot find another one million human trainer to do that, right? So the scale can only be very, very small. However, the cross learning pattern is very different requires no human interference, as long as the goal, in this case, uh, crotch the nuts, as long as the goal is clear, the crowd can figure out by all by itself. No matter in the city, in the farm, in the mountain, in nature environment, with or without cars. Learning patterns requires no human interference can really shine because they are not limited by the number of human trainers. After comparing how crows crotch the nuts and how parrots learn to speak human language, we can see a very advanced learning pattern at least have these three attributes. Number one, small data. Number two, big task. Number three, no human. Small data means this machine learning model does not require a lot of training data and can learn very fast and grow very fast with very few data sample. Big task means it's not limited and bounded in very, very narrow field, but it can be applied to many, many different things, different purposes and no human means no human interference. The growth of the AI should not be limited by how many human trainer we find. If you enjoy the content, please like the video and comment down below to share what you know about machine learning. And don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.